This morning I want to spend some time on the International Baccalaureate to give you good information about what the options are for you at the end of this year when you make some decisions about either continuing NCA into Level 2 or Level 3 or, or opting for the IB, the International Baccalaureate option. So I'm going to focus on the IB but understand that we are tremendously supportive of NCA and all that it is. So the IB is a qualification that's recognised worldwide. You can take IB to any university around the world and they'll recognise it straight away and it'll get you into any university, any course that you want because it is far more transportable and far more widely recognised than NCA might necessarily be. So <clears throat> that gives you a huge advantage. There is a year 11 student who's in this school this year and he's looking to do IB in Germany next year. He wants to do an exchange so he can start his IB career in Germany bring that IB career back and continue the qualification that back at Takapuna Grammar in year 13. And that's the kind of transportability that that qualification has got. So in terms of the school, we have really committed to a teaching and learning philosophy. You're familiar with knowing, connecting, relating, supporting, yes. The philosophy of IB is exactly the same. The school isn't having to make a huge philosophical shift. So when you look at some of their school words, they are really synonymous, the same meaning as the IB words and the IB intentions. So I'm going to cut right into the detail now. There are six groups of subjects, and you need to do one subject from each group. So the first group up the top, slightly cut off by the screen, is language A, language one, and that would for most of you be English. So your English program as you know it now will continue if you were to choose the IB. Group two is a second language. Those of you who are studying two languages already, French, German, Japanese, uh, can continue studying that second language and take that into IB. If you haven't got a second language, then you can take up what we're starting as a Spanish course, and it's called Spanish Ab Initio. It's an IB course that's for language learners who are starting right from the very start a language in year 12. And so there is two languages required for IB, that's one of the features of IB, and we really, really like that. And if you haven't got that second language, you can go into the Spanish Ab Initio course, which will be available to you next year. Group three are the individuals and societies, so there are your social sciences, social studies that is, history, classics and geography, you need to do one of those. Uh, group four are the experimental sciences, so they are, have we go, there's three of them. Chemistry, physics and biology, that's correct. Group 5 is a mathematics course, a general mathematics course. And then group 6 is the arts, which is fine arts, as in the room you're sitting in now, or performing arts, as in music and dance and drama. You don't have to do the arts in group 6. If you don't want to do music or fine arts, you can, or performing arts and fine arts that is, you can choose one of the other subjects from one of the other groups. So you might. that you're actually really good at social sciences, so you want to do geography and history. So instead of doing the arts, you might take history into group three as your second subject. Or you might decide that you want to do two sciences because you quite like science and you don't want to do any of the arts, so you can take physics as well as biology and thereby get your sixth group. With me so far? Good. The outer circle of six subjects, you can get any subject a, a seven point scale down to a zero point scale. Seven is high. So for example, if you're really good at English, then you might get a six. And if you're really good at mathematics, you might get a seven. And then you might get a five for biology if you were doing it, you might get a, a four for um, the performing arts. And all of those add to a total of potentially 42. So out of the outer circle, that's seven points each maximum, you can get a total of 42. I'm going to bring you into the centre now, the E-E-T-O-K-C-A-S. There are some requirements of IB that you need to complete to get your diploma. The first is an extended essay. IB sets some topics every year about learning and the dimensions of learning that there are inside the IB. And the extended essay is a 4,000 word piece based on a subject that you're really, really good at that you're expected to write. So it's a 4,000 thousand word essay, it could be on English, it could be on mathematics, a topic like is mathematics real, it seems too abstract, does it have any connection to the real world, and that's the kind of topic that would come out of the extended essay. So it's a 4,000 word essay. 
The second point is the theory of knowledge. The theory of knowledge is very much the known, connecting, related, supporting. Ideas about how you learn, ideas about what are the best ways of learning, how does how do you manage information in the new and modern world that you're going to go out to. And the theory of knowledge is some set topics, and you have to write a much smaller essay of around six to eight hundred words and talk to a mentor that will be working with you on that. And so that's the theory of knowledge. And then the creativity action service, the CAS, your co-curricular activities like rugby and netball and music and art and design and even girl guides or red cross collecting count towards your ID certificate. And so you can get some credits for that. So for the centre together, the extended essay, the theory of knowledge and the creativity action service, you can get a maximum of three points. The creativity action service, you need to do it, so they kind of tick it off. And then they have a look at your extended essay and the theory of knowledge, and they'll give you some points for a three point scale, three, two, one. If you don't do one of the centre ones, like your you don't deliver the extended essay, you get a zero for that centre circle and you drop the whole diploma. Okay? So it's really, really important. That centre aspect is to do with your understanding of how you learn and how you contribute and how you serve others and are creative. And that's kind of essential and core to the IB qualification. So now we know that there's how many points around the outside? 42, good answer. And we know that there's how many points on the inside? Three, so it adds two. Good, you're clever, wide right awake. So 45 points are the maximum number of points that you can get in an IB diploma. And there was a young lady in Kristen last year, I don't know if you noticed in the paper, who got one of those perfect scores, 45 out of 45 for an international baccalaureate at Kristen. <clears throat> to get an IB diploma, you need 24 credits or better. Okay? So to get an IB diploma, you need 24 credits or better. And 24 credits or better to go, we'll see you into any university, Auckland University, look for an IB diploma at 24 credits. And if you were to go into any university around the world, on 24 credits you'd be expected to get a B or a B plus average. So universities tend to run A to E, and uh, if you've got an IB diploma at 24 credits, you can expect to get really good grades, B or B plus. If you've got somewhere around 26 or 27 points out of the total 45, you can expect in, in a university to be getting A or A plus averages, which is really good, eh? And I'm expecting that every student who wants to have a go at IB at this school would expect to easily get an IB diploma, no problem at all. Now, the International Baccalaureate Qualification is a two-year program. Okay? So it's different to NCA. You do an NCA Level 2, and then you have some exams at the end of Year 12, and then you do Level 3, and you have some exams and some scholarship exams, maybe at the end of Year 13. The IB diploma is different. It's a two-year continuum. Okay? It goes for two years. There's no exams at the end of Year 12 program just kind of keeps running and flops into that second year of year 13. So <clears throat> that's a key difference and one of the reasons we're wanting to give you really good information right now is that once you make that decision at the end of this year, the end of year 11, that decision is a really important one because once you commit to NCA 2 or 3, level 2 or 3, or once you commit to IB, the two year program, it's very difficult to make changes through year 12 and through year 13. Does that make sense? You understand why? So that's really an important um, point to note. The other thing I want to talk to you about is that you can study, and you have to study those three of those subjects at a higher level, and you have to study three of those subjects at a lower level. So I might decide that I'm really good at English, and I'm quite good at French, that wasn't necessarily true, but let's say it was, and, um, and I really like maths. So I might decide to study those three subjects at a higher level, and that would mean that I'm in those courses for uh, 240 hours across the two years, it means that I'd start at the beginning of year 12 and that course will probably be finished around June, July, August at the latest of year 13. So it kind of goes for a year and for about another half a year after that. And then the other subjects which might be physics, which um, I'm not so great on at, and uh, performing arts, which I'm not particularly good at, and geo, which I'm, I'm pretty good at, but it's not one of my strong ones, I'd study them at standard level. And so a standard level course is 150 hours, not the 240 of the higher level, but 150 hours. And that course would start at the beginning of year 12 and probably take me through to about February or April of year 13. It's a slightly smaller course. And so three at higher level, three subjects at standard level gives you the six subjects. How many points do you need total? Good girl, 45. How do you need to get a diploma? 24. So here's some examples. We have uh, two students here. 
And the first unit is a kind of course to give you an example. They like English, an English speaker. They've decided to do the Spanish at Initio. They're going to do physics, history, maths, and performing arts. They're doing three at high level, which is the English lit, the history, and the mathematics. And they're doing the others at standard level. That's a kind of course that might appear for a student. Second scenario, a student who is from another country, first language is Mandarin. They're going to do English as their second, and they're going to do bio, geography, mathematics, and physics. Three at high level and three at standard level. There is an error in that slide. You've probably spotted it already. And, um, and that's a different kind of course. So creativity, action, service. The sorts of things that you can do, uh, if you're a singer like Petra is, you can sing. If you're great at design and you quite like doing design and it is something that attracts you, then you can do that. You might decide that kayaking or rowing or rugby is going to be your creativity action service. You might decide that working for the Red Cross or doing some voluntary work, those things and those activities can actually credit to your qualification. We've talked about that already and we have some time to take a few questions. Yeah. So, in the 24 credits for the primary line, does that include the middle section as well? Yes. Yeah, you have to get the middle section. So, you've got to get a 1, 2, or 3 point out of that middle section. If you get 0 because you've dropped one of those, it's a whole diploma. Okay. So, it's null and void. So, you're saying basically Yeah. You've got to do the three elements. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to take like, the social science, can you not take two from another one? Yes, you would need to do a social science in there. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. And if you're thinking about doing university in another country, yes. would you suggest either? Yes. Yeah, I would. NCA has allowed students to go into all sorts of universities around the world, so there hasn't been any um, problem in that. But the universities kind of seek equivalence, they, they kind of test the qualification against what they know already and then give it equivalence or not. IB is like another language uh, for universities, they understand IB and Universities all around the world will have that 24 credit diploma um, demarcation as part of their requirements. If you look at the university website, you'll see NCA because it's national qualification. You'll see Cambridge International examinations in there. You'll see IB at 24 points. So um, it's far more widely understood and as a qualification is all around the world. So students are travelling all around the world and going to universities all around the world and IB sees them directly in many respects. Okay. Any more questions? Great. You've been very good, I have to say. All I'm saying to you is that there are great options for you next year. NCA is a really valid option. The International Baccalaureate is also a really valid option and we want to give you good information in respect to that.